If you're new to our channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Coming up on the program, we're going to do an overview, a quick one, of the garden, what's growing on right now and how it's producing, as well as harvesting our spring potatoes. All that and more coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is sponsored by the Fox. MIGardener.com with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, organic, flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents. MIGardener.com. HappyLeafLED.com, a commercial grade grow light with a home gardener's affordability. All indoors, no fans, no motors, simply plug in and grow. Great for seed starting to lettuce to full grown tomatoes. HappyLeafLED.com. Sustain Natural Fertilizer, offering superior organic plant foods that deliver research proven results. Trusted by farmers, growers, and gardeners for 30 years. Learn more at sustain.com. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. We're going to take a short, quick, brief look at what we've got going on in the garden. An overview. Up on the high end here, there's not much to see. We've got a row of some tomatoes. They're doing okay. Uh, the jicama really didn't develop. Strawberries, we're going to remove that bed. That's up against the fence here. Do have a row of potatoes that we're going to dig up. And then here's where we're starting to bring more leaves in now as the trees begin to drop. This was an eggplant patch. We've got a tremendous amount of rain and that means a tremendous amount of weeds. Just like everybody else, we're fighting that particular problem which we're allowing them just to, to grow naturally and then we'll deal with it. Uh, with these eggplants, we've got a variety of different eggplants for, um, that, from Black Beauty to Turkish eggplant uh, that are doing decent. Uh, the pepper bed here, not much to speak of there. We've got a couple of plants that are doing okay. This here is, this here is the root maker two foot by four foot. You can sort of see it there. This is the experiment that we put cardboard down and then planted our beans in the holes there to try to hold the moisture in. And then we also have a squash of some sort that has, has germinated from the seed somewhere in there, but it's doing very, very well here. Great experiment, worked really good with the cardboard as a, a mulch to hold moisture. The Root Maker 4x4 four four raised beds doing really well. It had green beans on one side and beets on the other. They have just produced incredible as well as the Jerusalem artichokes. It looks like we're gonna have a very good crop. We reseeded that last year. We dug everything up in that bed and then strategically placed about every foot. Obviously we didn't get all the tubers out, but it has re-established the bed and now it's uh, doing quite well. Bush beans that have pretty much run their course. Cucumbers, some of them are starting to take off. So the lemon cucumbers look pretty good. We've had issues with other cucumbers that have not produced very well. And then we have another patch of tomatoes that we're dealing with some blight issues that we haven't kept up on as we encourage and recommend you to do. We haven't followed our own recommendations. And I've got potatoes that have died back here that are going to get harvested. And we've got another row of tomatoes and grasses and weeds and wildflowers coming up here um, that were, we didn't cage all the way. And that's the problem here. When you don't cage your tomatoes, you lose 50% of them, and that's what we have experienced on this uh, one side here. We didn't cage them or trellis them or anything, so that, that's the problem there. Yeah. These are our yacht cons. They've grown like two feet in the last week. We've had about five, six, maybe eight inches of rain, somewhere in that range. Uh, the yacht cons is a root crop from South America. It's a tuber that you eat, and uh, we've got weeds growing up them as a trellis. We also have, I believe these are morning glories. That's a volunteer. And then in amongst here, we have a couple of volunteer zucchini plants that we've been harvesting quite regularly. We've also got this, uh, we believe it's some type of grape. We are not removing it until we can identify it or it puts fruit on. Here's the banana squash that is starting to turn, so we're excited about that. See what we get on that. These are the potatoes that we're going to dig up. Uh, we've removed the weeds so it's easier to access them. We've got Brussels sprouts, kale, and okra all in this one bed. The Brussels sprouts are going on three and a half foot tall, so they look very, very good. So we've got tomatoes here. It looks like we've got a little damage on one here. Looks like it's the tomato hornworm, and I'll show you the tail signs of why I believe that. 
you look right there, that's tomato hornworm dropping. Uh, we have ants here, so this one's no longer viable. I mean, we could cut the bottom off there and use it, um, but that's a decision that we're going to pass on. We'll put it in the compost. We also have bird feeders in there, and that's greatly reduced the amount of issues that we've had with the tomato hornworm because the birds come in, feed, and they see the things moving around. This is our cabbage bed. We've been harvesting cabbages. Uh, you can see how large that is. Uh, we've had a lot of rain again, dealing with some slug issues. If you leave it alone, once you harvest it, you might get little sprouts, such as sprout-sized cabbage heads. Uh, this is the ground cherries. This is a mishmash bed of ground cherries, tomatoes, and peppers, and our pole beans, tomatoes, and some bush beans on the other end. So things are doing very good. We're fighting with the weeds just like you are, but uh, we've, we're far better than we were two weeks ago when we hadn't had no rain for about six weeks uh, of substantial uh, uh, amounts of rain. So the garden is full of weeds, but I'm okay with that because the production is here and we can figure out other ways of dealing with weeds next year. Uh, what we've done with the Yacons that seem to have uh, greatly reduced, at least on partially, if you look through here, I've got cardboard laid here. Now, the weeds that you're seeing, these vines, cardboard's starting to break away, but the vines are what's coming up between the cracks. Up to here, what I did was we had all them leaves that we put in the garden, and then I put the cardboard on top of the leaves and took a post hole digger and chopped holes, and then put my plant starts, the Yacons, in the holes, and that really smothered out a majority of the weeds. So we've learned that we want to put the leaves down, or the weeds down. We want to put the le leaves down first, cardboard, punch holes, then put our plants in. And that really does seem to vary uh, quite a bit, reduce the amount of weeds that we have to deal with. But just like everybody else, your garden may be weedier than ours or less weedy, but uh, we're happy with what we're getting the production wise out of it uh, as, as far as it goes right now. So it's time for us to harvest our spring garlic. Now we're a little late. We've had a tremendous amount of rain, so it didn't make sense for us to get in the garden and mud it out. Now spring garlic, typically, traditionally, and recommendedly, uh, you plant garlic in the fall. We plant the first Saturday in October, and we harvest it late June, early July. This allows the plant to have adequate cold hours to develop the bulb correctly. When you plant spring garlic, the technique is to get it in just as soon as you can chisel it in the ground so it can get some cold hours on it, some freezes, even some snowfall. Even though snow kind of insulates the ground, it's not. You want that <clears throat> uh, non-snow freeze. And that's what we had here. It was warm for a couple of weeks. We were able to get it in the ground and we got some very hard freezes. We got a couple of snowfalls on it. So we're going to see if the bulbs have developed correctly. We planted 12, I think we've got five or six that actually came up. Now these are dead. Uh, we did harvest escapes off of them, but these plants have sat in the ground a little longer than what I wanted, but we're gonna see what, what we have here, using a garden fork just to loosen the soil. Well, it's not a bad spring garlic bulb, it's not humongous, but I can feel the different cloves that are inside there. So that means it, it developed uh, relatively uh, good here. Let's see what this one, they're all on the small side uh, compared to what our fall garlic was. Now here is, you can see very clearly, these are hardneck variety. Each clove has developed. It's not as pretty as the garlic that we harvested that we planted in the fall. So I'm going to get the rest of these harvested and we'll end up seeing what we have here. So we've harvested, we got seven, we planted 12 total. And they are on the smaller side compared to what we were harvesting before. Harvesting before, uh, the, the garlic we planted in October, harvested in late June, early July, was about two, uh, about twice as big as that particular bulb there. So spring garlic, it will work. Uh, I would still recommend if you can at all plant it in October or in your area uh, when it's recommended. Garlic's hard to grow in the southern areas of the United States. It's predominantly grown better in the northern parts of the United States because of that cold hours. But it does work in the spring, as you see here, just not to the magnitude and size. But again, you're planting it, you're letting it grow for 
about less than six months. You're not real, uh, giving up a lot of real estate as you would October through June. So spring garlic, it is a success. We just have to work on it if we choose to continue to go with this particular method. So harvesting potatoes, we kind of got, it got behind on us here uh, with some of the activities that we had to, obligations with the radio program that we had here in Milwaukee. So we didn't get these harvested at the time. We would like to have got them harvested. Uh, we didn't also didn't get a really good fall crop in either. But nevertheless, we're okay to go ahead and harvest them. It has rained a lot, um, but we, it's moist enough that the soil is going to fall off. I've removed some of the weeds here so I can find the bed. We had an irrigation system on it. You can see here, this is the remnants of one of the potato plants. So we're just gonna go down. This was one of the better beds. I'm interested to see how these potatoes do because they were chest high on me, never flowered, had a lot of green growth, and this was not a high nitrogen uh, bed. This was just an average bed that we had. So we're gonna dig them up uh, and see what we get here. We want to use a garden fork. It's going to allow the soil uh, to fall through. And if you do pierce a potato, it's not going to be as um, detrimental as it would be if you sliced it with a shovel. Uh, what do we got there? Yes. And the other problem is some of these, like this here, is rotten because we left them in the ground too long. So let's see how we can, how good some of these are. Um, find another one here. Rotten, left in the ground too long. So that's part of the problem that we're going to face here and the reality of if we leave these in the ground too long, they can rot. So I don't know. If all of these will, that's a rock there, it looks like a potato. That's, that's another rotten one. That one's rotten. So far, we found one good potato. There should be a plant somewhere right in this area. I see. All right, there's. That one's solid. It's tiny, but it's solid, so that's a start. Huh, here's a larger one. Let's see what we got here. It's got like a hole in it, but it's, it may have been early in development. That's a solid potato. So yeah, that's what happens. Part of it, you can see uh, it just... So I'm going to dig through here and we'll see what we end up getting on this bed. I've got another bed over there and another bed up there. And we'll see if the trend declines on rotten potatoes and more solid potatoes or what we end up with. All right, so we've dug this row here. Two things I found. One, though the potato plants were extremely high, we don't have very many potatoes to begin with. Secondly, the ones that we do have here, at least on this row here, most of them are mush. Uh, you can see here, uh, just mashed potato. Uh, in the ground and they stink terribly. This is what we ended up getting off the row, which is uh, surprising. So what does that tell me? That tells me one very curiosity question here. They were really tall, really large, and what we tell people when the question is asked, I've got a very large plant but very little fruit production, what's the problem? Overabundance of nitrogen in the soil. Now we have not tested this soil here. But the indications based on the way the plants were growing tells me there's a lot of nitrogen in this soil. Now we had tomatoes here last year and the way we planted our tomatoes that we did add, it was about a 9% nitrogen, 
phosphorus, somewhere in that range, and a little and a five or six percent uh, potassium, I think is what we had, somewhere in that range, under ten. But that still should not have affected the t the potatoes the way they did. Now we brought in a tremendous amount of leaves uh, this fall or the past year, and we had them mounted up, you know, two and a half foot tall here. But again, with that amount of leaves that should not have contributed to an abundance of nitrogen and put it into the soil. So we're going to go uh, we're going to go back here and see what those potatoes look like. Those were very those were put in the very first uh, day of the ground really could be worked. Um, these were uh, Yacon Gold's uh, potatoes here. So we'll see what we got back there and then we'll figure out what to do. So we did have rotten ones in this patch too. Uh, we didn't get the quantity that we thought we were going to get based on the plant development. Uh, we did get some red ones here. I nicked a few of them with the garden fork uh, there. But that's, uh, that's not good so far. So let's, uh, we'll go up on the high end and we'll finish the row that we had and we'll see what we have and uh, we'll make a decision on what we want to do next year. I came up here and dug potatoes and the high point of this was this pretty sunflower. That's about the best thing that happened on this end. Same thing as we've seen in the other two beds. Uh, minimal about potatoes and 90% of those that I dug up, which was few, were rotten. The second row over on that uh, main bed there, I didn't even dig up. I did two hills. They were all just mush. I wasn't going to spend my time digging the rest of them up. Uh, this one, uh, you know, just mush, slime. Uh, that's what we harvested that was good. That's from 75 feet of rows spaced about a foot apart. So uh, this has been one of the worst potatoes harvest that we've had. Nothing to do with the seed potatoes in which we got from Wood Prairie Farms. There's a lot of combinations. Uh, we usually have somewhat of a decent harvest. We've kind of trickled back and forth. Last year was an okay harvest. So we have to make the decision whether or not it's even viable, time worthy to even grow potatoes in our garden. Uh, there's some things in which you can grow very successfully that we can't. Possibly broccoli and cauliflower you may be phenomenal at. We can't get it to grow for uh, nothing here. You might be able to grow potatoes great and we're having problems or we may be able to grow tomatoes wonderful and you can't get anything to grow. So it's based on climate condition, earth, uh, the soil. So we have to figure out is it worth us planting potatoes again next year or if we would take that 75 feet of space that we had that we used for potatoes this year and put squash in there, zucchini, add another, add tomatoes, let's say 60 foot, that's 30 more potato, or 30 more tomato plants that we could have planted. So uh, we have fails just like you, we have weeds just like you. Thanks for joining us. Join us again next time for more organic gardening and food preserving. I'm Joy Baird and this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. For more information, please visit the